we are back with session 32B. Uh, I said it with authority for once, because I have it written on a piece of paper in front of me. Um, quick recap. Uh, last session, you guys went from uh, the Temple of the Rising Sun up in far northern Chult. Uh, you traveled with some members of the Obanashi tribe, uh, namely Shosala um, and her uh, retinue south to the Forsaken Tree uh, in search of the Cursed Heart of uh, the Cursed Heart of the Wild. Um, they helped open and stabilize uh, this warren that you worked your way through underneath the tree. Uh, so they're all outside keeping things, uh, keeping this tree from literally just consuming you as Miracle Grow. Um, as you worked your way through, you ran into uh, a motley collection of unsavory creatures, and at the very end you found uh, the twisted form of Colate, the wizard that had uh, basically tricked uh, one of the ancestors of the Obanashi into giving him the heart of the wild and he then corrupted it, and we ended last session with you guys, uh, I believe we finally ended with Sarath in giant ape form, uh, turning Colate into a fine paste against the roots of this tunnel. Uh, so that is about where we are. Um, questions? Clarifications? Anything? Yeah, I think we're good. Um. Because I turned him into paste, I'm guessing there isn't much to loot. Uh, things to loot on Colate. Let's take a look. Honestly, hadn't hadn't thought about that. I mean, he's paste, but you know, you can sort through the paste, which I don't think presents a particular problem for <laughs> Sarah. Uh, she's a. What? Are you gonna stay in? giant freaking ape form to do that? No. <laughs> I don't think she can do much. I'm just double checking here. Oh, okay. Um, so I will delete your giant ape token. And uh, as you scour through the paste of bones and ichor, you do find... Uh, three things of note. Um, you find 120 gold. You also find goggles of night. And uh, kind of floating in the middle of those three trees, kind of now you can see it now that this fighting is over and all of the various noxious clouds have dissipated. There appears to be a uh, tarnished coin kind of hanging down from a tendril in the ceiling. Was that the one that I had the bear, like, swipe away, or was that... Um, I'm gonna say I don't remember the bear swiping a coin, so I'm gonna say... Like, when, when we came into the room, he, like, you said that there was something, like, in the middle of those trees, and then when the bear, like, knocked it, that dude appeared and killed. Oh, okay. Uh, well, then we'll say that the coin is uh, lying kind of on the ground somewhere. Because it consequently then died. And it's also a bear. I don't think they can hold. Yeah, so we'll say the coin is... Let me just draw a point a thing. So we'll say the coin got tossed over here by the bear. That red X. Oh, maybe you can't see it. Uh, let's see how many spells we got. Oh, I barely used...
they are casting a healing spirit. Yeah. Get it to roll. Who are you healing? I am healing. What the hell? What is it? Trosh is healing. <laughs> Something's healing, but I don't know. Uh, okay. Never mind. Um, healing spirit times four. Because I can, it says I can do so. Pl one plus my spell cast. One plus your spell casting ability modifier. So you're doing four plus four healings. Yeah, so So who gets who gets all that? Who needs all that? <laughs> Plus 16. Um, <laughs> That's so much. Well, everybody's hit pretty bad except in the Sika. Yeah, that's... Well, fortunately, I haven't used any second level spell slots yet. Oh, actually, the Sika's not looking that great either. Damn. Let me get her Didn't token you? bar out. Because it's not showing her... Resources, bar one. Unless I'm not a cleric and I don't have... I had it hidden because she was potentially somebody you might have fought at one point. You never know. I love how he's like, yeah, you might kill this person. Hey, I I just have a kind of a default way of presenting people until I know how you guys are going to react. Okay, there we go. Not yeah, so murder. Uh, Masika is at about half health. Artist is about... Artist is actually pretty rough uh Marikana's pretty rough Sarah's pretty rough yeah. so let's see we've got god damn it book just stay open Ugh. okay let's scroll up the chat oh there's the shoulder so, this is 12 in gets, total for the one. who gets the six No, oh, I rolled that one individually. Yeah, so I'm looking at the first one. You have oh, you have a two. Okay, so you had a healing word for four. Who got that? No, I, I didn't mean to cast that. So hmm. I was scrolling down past it. Okay, who gets the healing spirit for two? I'll take that. Okay, who gets the, the six? Two by. I get eight extra. Okay. Uh, Artist looks the most worse. So, so does he get the six? Six by four. Twenty-four. Why are you? Because each one, each one casts four times when I cast it. <laughs> Where it does four rolls. The spirit can heal. Wait. You call forth a nature spirit, it heals 1d6, it can, it can heal that number of times. You don't get multiple spirits, it just gets four heals. Yeah, that's what I mean. But I can keep doing it. As long as I have second level spell slots, I can just keep casting it. Oh, okay. And I just burned three of them, I think. Oh, so you just want to multiply each of these by four? Yeah, basically, just to save time. Okay, That's so then artist will get another. Everyone. Yeah, sure. No, I was just trying to figure that out. Sorry. Um, so he got six. Yeah. He gets another. Oh, six times four is twenty-four. So he gets another eighteen. Uh, I guess whatever. Oh yeah. Then the three. So who gets the twelve? Masiko or Murakana? I'll give it to. So I got I already healed Murakana for bit, I thought, for 4 by 4 yeah. or 16. 
Eight damage for breakfast. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, you did a healing word for four. Yeah, right. but I didn't mean to cast that. I am out of second level spell. Well, because you've got one left for twelve <sighs> and one left for four. I okay. could have should have nine healing po or eight healing potions left. I used. Sure, but time. let's let's not use a finite resource when we can just use an infinite one. I know. I just realized I don't have healing potions at all for some reason. Oh, it's gonna oh. be up there. So. Hey, put them on your sheet in D and D Beyond. Um, Grim, whoever's lost gets them. Gets the rest, I guess. Okay. Um. Which I think would be Murakon. Yeah, we'll just give him twelve plus four is sixteen. There we go. Okay. Um, cool. So you guys take a moment heal up um, you all see the coin lying over here on the ground uh, and that is where we are at you go huh I'm gonna poke it with axe. <laughs> you're gonna poke it with your axe just I'm sure. Okay. Never heard to be I mean, extra cautious with you. I had a bear slap it, but yeah. It's gonna blow up. It probably will. Um, I'll pick it up. You pick it up? Okay. Everybody makes a constitution saving throw. No, oh, damn it. Fuck. I'll roll for Artisan okay. and Sika. Uh, constitution saving throw, you said? Not a check. Saving throw. Ooh. Damn, Ooh. Nice. Okay, uh, let's see here. Well, uh, everybody except Artist takes 22 poison damage as a wave Jeez. of um, kind of corrupted power is released from that coin, and Artist takes 11 instead of 22. So you all just kind of get hit by a nauseating wave of uh, poison damage. Uh, but then the coin seems to be inert at that point although it definitely is um, it's definitely an object of power but uh, as you continue holding it Murakana it doesn't seem to be doing anything else well that hurt yeah I should have poked it some more yeah for what it's worth it says touching the coin causes it to happen so there you go well yeah I don't like this place anymore Shoot. <sighs> I mean did you ever truly like it oh, really <laughs> well so much for that what are you percepting if there's anything else in the room, but it's a room. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of plants. Um, you're in the, the bowels of a creepy tree. Although that weird red glow has also gone away um, after you picked up the coin. And it's, uh, if it weren't for your axe, it's dark in here. <laughs> well, uh That sounds like a you problem. Sarah, you're kind of the expert on tree things. Is, did did we did we cure this place? <laughs> uh unfortunately Sarah is probably one of the worst druids in the world in terms of nature stuff. She actually has no skill in it, not even proficiency. <sighs> ah. I forgot. You're actually, you're actually just as good as she is. Masika! <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we cured this place? And she's just kind of like looking around warily and goes, well, um, it hasn't eaten us. Uh, so, I don't that know. That sounds like a plot. And We should probably still get out of here, though, because they're probably chanting or some shit. And Artis says yeah. maybe we should take the coin back to the Obanashi. <laughs> Maybe 
Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Um, so you guys, are you guys just going to beeline out of here? I'm yeah, assuming there's nothing else left here to find. I mean, you can you can make as many assumptions as you want. <laughs> find perception with them. Um... <laughs> right, so I'm gonna win. <laughs> that's like that's like the worst possible question for a DM. We assume there's nothing else here. Um, <laughs> how do I answer that question consistently? <laughs> Even rolling a one, I still can technically get a higher perception roll than Mary. Ouch. Um... <laughs> if you count guidance, and... oh god. Well, yeah, that's keep your testing one. that. Yeah, so you guys don't notice um, anything else in this weird, creepy, bleeding vine walled uh, space. That's uh, to be fair, we wouldn't know if that was a shit roll, like in. Well, like I'm saying, you don't know. You don't yeah, notice no, that's anything. Yeah, that's on it, but is rolling. Like this, you, you can keep rolling. You're in the same room, so like rolling a perception check oh. over and over again isn't going to help you. Um, generally speaking, I'm just going to take the first roll. Um, cool. Okay. Um, so you guys don't notice anything um, of note. Like, I do have that passive perception, but I don't think that's going to help me with actively trying to find. I mean, passive perception would pick up anything up to the point that it would, right? Like, like traps or ambushes and shit like that. Or like anything. Like, if something had a perception check tied to it, I would. I try to give it to you. Um, I, I probably need to get better at handling passive perception, but I think. You are the only person across both groups who even potentially has a passive perception that hits things that would be percepted. <laughs> because yeah, yeah. Well, like most hidden stuff is either a DC 15 or a DC 20, right? Like uh. stuff that's less than that is as long as you say you're looking for it. Anyway, let's really talk about how I run 5th edition more. Um because that's entertaining. Uh, so I guess we just be like, because we didn't really see anything else. Sure. Um, um, well, nearly tapped out, so I don't want to run completely out if we. This... Um, well, yeah, so I'll just say, you guys, as you wander back out, or not wander, but as you make your way back out of this place, I'm not going to make you drag your tokens through every part of it, because that would just be, you know, or I kind... mean kind of painful um and it's not relevant yeah you don't notice anything on the way out um as i said i don't have a root top map for this so as you come out uh zandala and josala and the rest of the obanashi are still conducting uh their ritual um and as you all exit uh Josala kind of looks at you as they're doing it and she has kind of a questioning glance, almost like do we need to keep doing this? <laughs> we <Yeah>. live! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, so Earth goes over to check on Zandala for... Okay, so Zandala's also helping with the ritual, so at this point they all just kind of like Josala yeah, nods to everybody like, oh. else and they they, they stop chanting and, and give up on the ritual and you see the, the tree itself, um, that opening that they had stabilized in it uh, seems to just kind of kind of close and the tree um, it seems to kind of fade a little bit like it, it doesn't go anywhere but it just it seems a little less ominous now um, it seems more like just a giant weird dark tree as opposed to this malevolent force and uh Josala, uh, so so Zandala's okay, you know. She's just like, oh, that was definitely not magic I'm used to doing. Um, <laughs> you know, like just like uh, Chulton ritual magic is not something that a uh, that is in her wheel. Not a sorcerer. Yeah. Um, so I kind of got the impression magic is gifted upon them. They don't actually study for it or anything like that. It's an ability. 
I mean, generally speaking, yeah, like, druids inherit their magic from, you know, their connection with whatever druidic practice Nature they do. Spirit or whatever. Yeah, and, like, divine casters just kind of channel divinity. And then sorcerers, generally speaking, are... Yeah, they're like the the natural powerhouses, right? Like, when Zandala casts a fireball, she's just, like, point and click. Um as opposed to a wizard who has to, you know, recite Study it. Study for it, prepare yeah. spells, all that sort of shit. Yeah. And Murakano just casts Axe repeatedly. Because <laughs> <laughs> why not? Um, Man, does he have a lot of spell slots. I know, right? It's almost like it's a cantrip or something. Yeah, freaking hell. Barbarian's infinite spells. Barbarian OP. <laughs> I mean, really, attacks and cantrips are the same thing, with just a whole bunch of different words built around them. Anyway. Um, yeah, they're both they're, Yeah, they both scale with level, blah, blah, blah. Um, so Zosala, Zosala walks up over to you guys and says, uh, so did you, did you find the heart, or did you find anything in there? We found a token. Oh, kind of holds up his coin. I found this! He just seems kind of gleeful. And, uh... <laughs> he just about died. Josala just kind of again looking at you like... This is the brightest bulb there is, isn't there? Or maybe this is this is the most radiant torch in the in the, in the the cluster. <laughs> um, to, uh, and she just kind of holds out her hand and says, May I see? He hands it over. Oh, and we, uh, we, we killed some magic dude. I think he was your friend. Well, not your friend, but you know, we... Whatever. The, the druid turned him into a smear. Hmm. So she takes the coin uh, and just kind of nods approvingly and goes, well, maybe we'll find out if our our ancestor Roga can finally rest at peace. Um, and she kind of looks at the coin uh, and says, you know, thinks about it and kind of musing aloud says I wonder I know he corrupted it but could maybe this is it um did anything happen when you took this a uh, fairly significant blast of poison one of the most un unpleasant feelings of my life um okay I will she looks to Artis uh, and Masika and, and says, you know, I, this may be the heart. Um, it's hard to know. I mean, we know it was corrupted. It's certainly an odd shape for it to take if it is the heart. Um, I think we will take this back to the temple and see if we can, if our ancestor is still there, speak to her and see if we can figure out if this is what we're looking for and figure out if we can purify it. Um, probably not the immediate answer you were hoping for, but we're going to have to look at this. An artist just has this kind of defeated, resigned, like, of course this is <laughs> the answer look on his face. And he says, uh, do, do you have any idea how long that might take? Um, and it's kind of unprecedented, Otis. He's like, I know, but do you have any idea? Like, I'm not trying to be difficult. Josal says, well, uh, you know where the temple is. Um, we'll certainly be there, um, at least until we've done it. You know, But it'll probably take us at least a few weeks, if not longer. Um, if there's any purification rituals and this is the heart, I'm sure it's going to, um, it won't be a minor undertaking. You're, and she kind of winces as she says this, you're, you're welcome to come to the temple. Um, it's a bit odd for us to let outsiders come in, but you've obviously done us a service, both clearing the temple and I'm assuming you killed Colate down there. So, uh, you're always welcome. Um, We'll also try to notify uh, Amadi, uh, and I believe you're 
you and Masika said you were both from Mesro. Uh, and Masika just kind of nods, like, I think I am. I'm pretty sure I am. Uh, Arda says, I actually do keep a residence in, in the residential quarter there um, when I have to, when I have to go back. Uh, and Masika says, they're not Masika, uh, Zrasala says, well, could you, if you tell me where it is, we'll make sure to at least leave some sort of message for you there if we can't, if you don't come back to the temple or whatever. And so Artis pulls out a journal from his, uh, from one of his pockets and just kind of quickly scrawls a map and, and writes some directions and then explains to, uh, to Josala which one of the, the very, how to get there, where you where his place is, um, so she knows, and then just holla, thanks everybody. Um, it says, is there is there anything we can do for all of you before we go back to the temple? Hmm. Hug your ancestor, it looks like she needed it. <laughs> <laughs> and she just Josala kind of smiles at you, even almost against her will, but she's like, okay. <laughs> she doesn't want to like you, but she just can't help it. <laughs> just a good guy. Ah, <laughs> oh, now we really don't know where to go from here because we found the hard foot. So, uh, Sarah, did you have anything you wanted to ask of them? Are you there? Did, did Australian internet claim you? So. Okay, well, I'm going to pause it for a second. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I don't know how much of that you caught. Merc kind of hugged someone. Um, so yeah, he told Josala to hug, uh, cause you walked away without <laughs> saying anything. Um, I mean, uh, to be fair, I went straight over to Zandala. Well, you so. did, but then like a whole conversation happened and I guess you missed it all. Um, huh. well, unintentionally, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, to recap the session we're in, um, Josal is taking the coin back. She's going to follow up with Artis. Um, oh, yeah. Went to a temple. Okay. Yeah, they're taking to the temple, and Josal asked, basically, you guys have helped them out, so is there anything that they can do for you before they go to try and figure out what this coin is? If it's the heart, cool. yada yada. Uh, I am partial to gold, but I don't think we have many places to spend it right now. And plus, they probably don't have much gold. Do they have anything that could help us on our journey? Um, she gestures over to her people and they have uh, roll a d6. Oof. There you go. Well, they, uh, they have two greater healing potions they can spare. Sounds good. That doesn't come in handy. Yeah. So I have Mark kind of add those to his character sheet, but not D&D Beyond, and they'll disappear. Um, yeah, yeah Mark kind of probably yeah. needs more than I do. Um, and she says, yeah, that's... Obviously, we spent about a week and a half coming down here, so I think that's about all we can spare to make the voyage home, but um, I guess good luck in whatever you do next. And they... Uh, <laughs> They kind of get set and they start start on their their trek back to uh, to the that, that magnificent journey. Yeah, let's see here. So let Americana me... yells after them. Take care. You know, if you ever need us, you sure you can find us without much trouble. Look for the giant <laughs> swath of destruction. Just look at the. Tr 
train of death. Um, okay. <laughs> so I've, I would I've, say we're leaving back, but we don't usually when we're flying. True. I mean, when we fly, we usually end up summoning like demigod. Oh, something will be on fire in our wake. Yes. Oh, I guess I had the game pause this whole time. Is that true? Gosh dang it. I don't think so. I don't know. No, it just popped up then, like oh, it okay. flashed. For a second. It was lag on my local hosted camera account. Weird. Um, so I hopefully preloaded the map. Can you guys see the map? Sure did. Yeah, I did. Sometimes I remember to fucking do shit. Um, <laughs> okay, so you guys are at the Forsaken Tree, um, which is on the eastern coast, north or south of Kitcher's Inlet. Um, yeah. So the question at this point is, what do you guys want to do? Where do you want to go? Check out that port. The Port Castigliar? That's the one. That's ruins. You guys passed it on the way down. Oh, damn. I mean, you could go there, but you know it's just ruins. That's, um, where, that's where Artis's buddy is buried. Uh, Wait, is Masika going with us? So Artis, Zandala, and Masika are with you guys for now. Um, Fantastic. I guess we could check out uh, what's his shell. Ishua is um oh. yeah. yeah. So artists can tell you Ishua is uh Ishua is a ruin. Uh, let me get the description of it so I can give you the, the proper description. Not the H I okay. Where'd it go? Um yeah, so what artists can tell you is that it uh, it basically, during the spell plague and all of the craziness therein, um, Ishua had been a, a kind of a, a minor coastal settlement, and that whole refuge bay, um, Ishua used to be on the coast, but that whole chunk, like kind of that whole hex, to use a game term, just sank into the sea. Um, huh. So at this point, there's really just um, mostly it's completely underwater. Um, occasionally, Artis has said says that uh, when he skirted around it, he did once run into a sea hag um, that seemed to be scouring the ruins for anything of value. But beyond that, um, Ishua is pretty much a ruin under the ocean. So I'll admit the main motive, which you may or may not guess, is that I am trying to find my the pirate hook. <laughs> so I think you said before to go back to go to a coastal area. I, I definitely shortly. have have ways for that hook to happen. Um, so don't worry. Um, okay. It's just yeah. Um, because, I mean, let's see, things that you guys have going, um, I can wave my hand. Oh, let me go look at the timeline real quick and figure out where the other party is in relation to you. Because that's the other part, is that the show is slowly in the direction of where the other party is. I mean, it's kind of directly in the direction of the other party. Um, yeah. Whoa, I don't need to pull that up on the recording. Jesus. Okay, let's see here. So you're here. Um... Oh, that's the seething halls. Okay. Uh, let me do some quick math. Uh, sorry, this will be slightly boring, but I have to do some quick math mm -hmm. to figure out where you guys are. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Well, we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. We'll say it takes nine. It took you guys nine days to get down, because you traveled faster than you would have on your own. Um, well, you traveled faster than by foot. Yeah, I was so, gonna say because if we flew, you, then we'd sorry, you weren't flying, but you were on foot with a group that knows the path really well. Um, so let me just get the two timelines synced up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Cool. 
so assuming that you guys have just been like kind of checking in um travel to heart so that's nine days resolve heart so at this point um if you had contacted the party today at some point or like within the last day they were basically entering um omu so you guys essentially the events happening in this session are concurrent with the events happening in the last session for the prior group um so they just entered omu and uh i don't know sarah did you listen to or watch that video uh parts of it all right not the very most recent one though I oh, okay one yet. um so they entered omu well we didn't have a session on thursday yeah so <laughs> so the shrine of shigambi did you see that where they fought the gladiators yeah and then they lost like three members of their party and probably would have had a wipe if <laughs> <laughs> Almost. So you would know that they had entered Omu. I don't think you know the results so far of what's happened in Omu. Um, but you know that they were entering Omu pretty much today. Um, yeah, which I would dare say Theresa almost certainly would have told us about through the Sending Stone. I'm going to assume you guys at least know where each other are via Sending Stone. I'd be like, hey, we're checking out this place or whatever. Yeah. So if you want to rejoin them, um, you're certainly welcome to do that. Um, it's just the other issue is, of course, time. Huh? Well, the issue is, of course, then time. Like, you know, time uh, syncing. Like, I can't make the schedule that they have and so on. Yeah, because I'm, I'm a negative for Thursdays. Well, okay. Unless I mean, like, they're both working at different sections of the same thing that they're doing so let's let's talk inside baseball a little bit i don't the only time i expect to bring you guys together at the same time to try and play together is if i can swing the final session of the campaign um the rest of it i think i know how to have you guys so omu um yeah so to, to go trying to figure out how far to go so like where you guys are finishing you, so the jungle is chapter two omu is chapter three there's a chapter four and a chapter five um omu can pretty you guys can pretty much meet up at the end of omu um they may or may not even have chapter four same with you guys chapter four is entirely kind of optional based on what people do currently, what they are doing is probably going to make Chapter 4 happen, but also Chapter 4, I think, for them is probably going to be, like, two or three sessions. Um, and then we get to Chapter 5, and Chapter 5 is the tomb, and I think it's pretty easy to run you guys in parallel in the tomb, or at least I'll give it a shot. I guess if it becomes ridiculous, I'll just come up with some lore stuff. But I think the tomb is definitely big enough that two different groups, if you guys talk in Discord, can at least figure out, like, who's going where. Yeah, fair enough. Let's okay. split up, gang. <laughs> well, I mean, like... That's... Just to give you an idea, let's see, chapters four through... Or where's the end of chapter five? Here's the end of chapter 5. So chapter 5 ends on page 190. And it starts... On page 125. So out of 5 chapters, it has a disproportionate chunk of the book. So there's, there's a lot. <laughs> so I'm not worried. Um, yeah, fair enough. And there's ways I can fuck with it if I need to. I'm not worried about that. So, I guess from a perspective of like, if you guys want to catch up, I don't know how long it's gonna take the party, the other party, to go through Omu. Um, but we could also very easily, whenever you guys, either when they are getting to the end of Omu, I'm sure we can coordinate to like 
in fiction come up with a way to get you guys together? I mean, like, there is the part where Sarath can technically fly six hexes in one day. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm not super worried right now, because right now it would take you one... Wait a minute, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it would take you eight or nine days. Assuming we use like the compromise way to get down there. I think if we actually did it like how fast you can fly, we could probably do it in like two or three days, maybe four. Um, so we can fudge that however you want. So like if you guys want to head down there, we can head down there. Um, and I can make that work on the back end. It's just kind of... So I'm just having a look at the quest log thing that I have. And um, we've kind of done most of the side stuff, except for the fact that we can't really go much further with Mesro at the moment with what we have. Unless like another clue just happens to stumble upon us or they purify it a lot faster in a couple of weeks. I mean, yeah, right now, I don't think you guys have any obvious leads on Mesro. Um, you could go poke around mm -hmm. Mesro if you wanted to. Um, there's certainly some stuff ready there. Um, I'm just looking at the map to see what else you guys have. Uh, Let's just look that far from where we are. Yeah, um... What is that? Oh, okay, that's what that mm. is. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it depends. Do you want... Yeah. Because places that you know about but haven't gone, there's Kirsabal, there's Exploring Mesro and Promise, um... Abandoned Palace of Ra. Roz and C. Uh, the other party can oh. that out. Um, here, I can just reveal part of that to make life easier. Is that my brush? That's my brush. What's Kirsabal? Yeah, I guess we don't know, do Kirsabal, no, you guys would... I mean, Artis knows what it is. Um, Kirsabal is an Aarakocran settlement um, built into a cliffside. Uh, it's a small settlement of... of Kind of devout Aarakocrans who live up on the side of a cliff. Um, yeah. I guess we just better head up to Mesro first. Unless you got any objections, Americana. I got nothing. Sweet. Cool. Plus it's on the coast. So do you want to head, are you heading straight to Mesro or are you heading to the coast and then to Mesro? How do you want to do it? Uh, we'll go by the coast. I mean, it doesn't really change too much, I think, either way. It's like an extra hex yeah. if we go by the coast. So I'll say it takes you about a day um, to get kind of up here. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm going to play with the travel a little loose just to, to make my timelines make more sense for me. Um, Fair enough. Well. I mean, at this point, you can wild shape for a pretty long time. So, <laughs> and yeah. It, so it takes her like an hour to rest and get all of her charges back. So she can technically fly for pretty much the whole day. Yeah. Um, so, so you fly up there and camp. Um, do you camp on the coast or like where do you want to be? Uh, we'll camp near the coast, I guess. Okay. So that we can like see if anything shows up. Sure. Um, I will say the next, you know, in the in the morning. I know you trance. Although I have to look up your trance because I think your trance still requires. It can only happen during a long rest. So it doesn't actually make your long rest faster. It's weird. I was looking up the rules on it. It's fluff is the basic thing, which is really dumb. Yeah. But we can get into that some other time. Um, so you're kind of, everybody else is mostly still asleep. Um, you know, you and Zandala are just kind of... Oh, wait, I just read it. I think the gimmick is more that it does take less time, but 
and it's more the fact that you're not really unconscious. Yeah. Whereas, like, when someone's asleep, they can get caught by surprise. Or an elf is basically sitting there, sitting there with their legs crossed, and meditating. But they're still going to notice if someone like walks around near them. And you can also spend more time, um, like on watch than a human. Right? Because they don't really sleep. Because so. <laughs> like, a human has to sleep for six hours. An elf. Four. four they transfer four and then they can do whatever else for the other four and even um, that they're meditating they can technically do light duties well we can if it ever matters we can debate it but uh, yeah, um, yeah fair. i would say you need four hours uninterrupted time um although yeah. i also found out of course this is the most entertaining thing ever uh i also found out that one combat does not interrupt a long rest, which I think is bullshit, and I'm not. A <laughs> so, no, straight up, like, what's his name? The fucking guy. Not the guy who like writes the rules. Yeah, like the guy who does all the errata. I was like, oh yeah, like one round of combat doesn't interrupt a long rest. Like, how does it not? Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? Like, there are a few things in the world more stressful to a person than combat? I would assume. We were talking about this in the DM chat, and somebody said, I can attest from personal experience, if a wild animal shows up, even if you kill it, and you're out camping, good fucking luck going back to sleep right away. Like... Yeah, because you're going to be amped up and everything. So I'm going to say if a long rest is interrupted, you lose the long rest. Yeah, that's fair. I think that's a much more sensible interpretation than fucking Chris Perkins. And I'm glad this is recorded. Hi, Chris. I'm sure you love this this fucking YouTube series where I just complain <laughs> about 5e endlessly while running 5e. Um, it's just beautiful content. It comes from a place of love because I think there's a lot of good here. It's just wrapped up in a lot of awkward. Um, You're okay. just grumpy. I am also very grumpy. Um, Grim, one might even say. The name doesn't relate to that, but yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm going to do one more aside. It turns out Pathfinder's two, Pathfinder 2's action economy is actually simpler than 5th edition's. Didn't realize that until somebody pointed it out two days ago to me. In in 2nd edition, uh, you get three actions. That's it. There's no, like, oh. every everything you can do is somewhere between one and three actions, but, like, you get three that's it there's no like bonus action action whatever anyway um so back to the game uh that we're you know <laughs> playing um yeah. so you and zendala are i guess talking because you're both elves right so americana and and artists are asleep and you two have both sufficiently trans snoring and... loudly oh that's <laughs> very good to <laughs> stop the undead from coming at you in the night um <laughs> Basically, you and Zendala are just casually firing cantrips at any stray zombies that approach at this point. Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> well, that one's done. Um, I like that image, actually. <laughs> just having a romantic, you know, like, night out by just roasting zombies. You guys are <laughs> involved in, in, uh, in minor intimate relations when... <laughs> She just casually <laughs> tosses a firebolt off to the side, and you hear. <laughs> That's hot. Oh boy! Literally. Uh, yeah, there it is. Time to pun. Okay. <laughs> um, is that like time to barrel in a video game? Time to pun in a five E session. Uh, so yeah. as you're you're sitting there, dawn is starting to break, and you do notice out in the waves. Um, it's pretty far off the coast, but you notice a, a ship that looks just strikingly familiar. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh my god, where'd the rails go? Oh, there they are. Right? <laughs> Everyone wake up. Who? <laughs> what? Zombie? Where? Huh? Sarah is waking everyone up. Okay, artists. Is there a pretty uh -huh. dragon nearby? Huh? What? Everybody, everybody's in the Masika is just kind of Masika just kind of gets up with a little more grace than everybody else. <laughs> Say that with two elves in the party, but yeah, right. Well, you guys are already awake. Armorine just starts smacking his axe against his chest. I'm awake now. What's what? What? 
and I point towards the ship. Let's out. How, can I see that? Ah, can everyone else see it, or is that just something because Sarah was keeping watch? And I mean, everybody else can it. see the ship. Um, it's hard to make out. It's probably like in the fog and the haze to everybody else. They're just like, uh, yep. I mean, it's a little weird to see a ship here, but that's a ship. Um, artist kind of offhandedly notes, oh, maybe, maybe Roz is still shipping. Um, but if you, yeah, if, if you want to try and identify the ship, um, you're probably going to have to get a little bit closer to it. How far away would you say it is? Probably like, like two like... miles out. It's, it's kind of at the, like the, that's kind of bullshit, isn't it? Um, two miles would be yeah, a bit of pressure like... even now. Um, it's probably, it's, it's far enough away that you can, you can see the silhouette and to you, the silhouette reminds you of your ship, um, or not your ship, but like your cruise ship. That said, like you would probably have to somehow get closer to it to like verify that that's actually your ship or if it's just, you know, a yeah, similar just so ship. Just looks like it. Uh, I'm going to say we should intercept it i think i recognize that ship and um she'll get ready to turn to a quetzal if and or when people agree uh, and mm. artist kind of looks at me like uh do you want to scout it first i mean I can't say I'm an expert on ship-to-ship -ship combat, but the last time I was in one, it ended pretty badly for a lot of people, and there's uh, five of us? Can I kind of just starts giggling. <laughs> Sarah turns into a giant eagle and flies off to intercept it herself. <laughs> okay. Um, you can tell that she's pent up about this. Sarah <laughs> kind of screams after her, Barbarian bomb! Barbarian bomb! <laughs> You can see he's visibly chair. upset that he's been left behind. Uh, d do you have your spare character ready arm? <laughs> Otherwise it'll be yeah, a slow I, session. I for you on that ship. As powerful as you are, I don't know if one character can take out an entire ship of people. Um, no, 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 that would actually be incorrect. Do you know how much a giant ape weighs? Enough to capsize a ship. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> DM Fiat says no, it's not enough to capsize this ship. Um, so Just, like, if you dropped a like fucking thirty-ton monkey on it, that would absolutely fuck up a ship. All right, King Kong. Look, you can trust me, <laughs> or you can just try and fucking no, I know. YOLO I'm this it. motherfucker. Um, so as you you fly closer, you're you're definitely able to get close enough to verify that this is in fact the ship that you used to crew. And it is sailing. Uh, it is sailing at pretty good speed um, to the south. Uh, you it's can south. to the south. Um, so it's kind of following the coast here, um, but it is definitely headed in the southeasterly direction here of the coast. Um, you can fly. Like to... Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, is it heading like towards refuge or towards the dawn warrior? Well, where you guys are now, it's just heading, you don't know, right? Like, you won't, you wouldn't know where it's headed until it gets kind of, kind of where the tree part of Forsaken Tree is. Um, like, that's kind of where you assume, where you could assume it would either break off to the Dawn Warrior or head south to Refuge Bay. Um, but right now you just know it's kind of following the coast. Um... Okay, well, I guess I head back to the uh, party and uh, let them know that that's absolutely, definitely the ship that I was on. And uh, I think everybody except Zendala is just kind of like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I'm assuming um, you've told Zendala a little bit about your past, right? Is that fair? You would have, but probably not to anyone else. Americana peeks up all excited so how are we gonna sink it well um first i'll i guess i explain to them uh that she well sarath was actually a pirate for nearly a hundred years <laughs> that was 
she was recruited by a captain who took her on as functionally a trainee, I guess, or a ship hand. And they were betrayed when they got back to port by someone who presumably is steering that ship right now because she knows, or Sarath, as far as she knows, her entire crew was wiped out and she just escaped by being at the grove at the time, or a druid grove. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna potentially do some retconning here for you. Um, oh, okay. Feel free to tell me if, if I'm wrong. But, um... So basically you had taken on, or your crew had taken on, uh, a new crew member. Um, it was, okay. uh, Cholton. Uh, his name, uh, was supposedly Zane. Um. <laughs> Black off one direction. I mean, I know vaguely that one direction is a boy band. Yeah. Um, and one of the names today. I randomly name. generated a name. It was Zane. <laughs> so his name is Zane Mornell. Um, Zane crewed with you guys um, for like half a year. And then, as you had said, uh, once you returned to port uh, one night, uh, you had headed back to your Druid's Grove. And I'm, I'm saying that you guys were actually in the uh, Nalanther Isles. So you had, you had, crewed up with a group from the Nalanther Isles, which is a, a well-known kind of pirate-slash-privateer. But probably closer than Oresk, where Sarath was originally from. <laughs> well, so you had made your way, I think, south, right? And yeah. and so Nalanther is kind of in between Chult and Amn and the Sword Coast. Um, so it's a very obvious place for a... Uh, less than upstanding group of uh, individuals to decide to base a culture on taking what they can by the sword. Um, so yeah, so you you had, had left the, the crew and uh, when you had returned, you had seen that most of the crew had either uh, in the shore leave uh, Zane led a mutiny against your captain um, and succeeded uh, either recruiting or putting to death anybody who opposed him and sailing off with the ship. Um, so you two know each other. Like, he's not just some stranger. You actually know this guy. Until the mutiny, you didn't have any reason to suspect him as anything other than, like, another... Yeah, just another, another human. That joined the crew. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, whatever. Another person who was fine with using, a, like I said, using a sword to take what they thought should be theirs. Um... And he sailed off, and that was, at this point, probably like five Which years. Given, ago. go ahead. Yeah, sorry. No, I was thinking more that you know, on the ground that Sarath is an Esmodian, and she swore to protect the captain, which she evidently failed at. That's like pretty much number one priority for her to, yeah, kill that dude. Um, so yeah, so, so that's the ship. It's definitely your captain's old ship. And it's sailing southeast. You can... Yeah, so everybody hears this story. So... There you go. Hopefully that was a decent working of your your backstory yeah. into this. I think uh, that works. At least for what I can remember. Because um, <laughs> those notes are, like, from six months ago for me now. Uh, yeah, fair. I mean, I barely changed them. So, But it's... Yeah. Yeah, yeah um... I guess it is a ship, so it's not going to move extremely far in an hour. Would I still be able to have time to get catch up to it in flight form if I short rested? So I think that here's the challenge. There's there's two challenges. One is that the ship is going to keep moving no matter what you do, right? Because it's yeah. a ship. So the the challenge is that as you wild shape, you're going to have to play this game of yo-yo with it. Um, the other is this is a pretty seriously crude ship. Like this is a, you I'm want a nice, head on take it. like it's a three master. It's got a full complement of a couple dozen, at least, um, you know, uh, pretty burly pirates. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess the question is up to you. Do you want to try and, um, do you want to try and drop in on it or do you want to see where it's going? Um, I'll see where it's going, I guess. 
Yeah, like, Artis, Artis is, and Masika are pretty much kind of like, let's let's see where this thing is going. They're both... So they have to stop somewhere. <laughs> like, I can't just keep well, sailing well, forever. I mean, obviously, yeah. Um, Masika's kind of iffy on uh, the idea of... Artis and Masika are both very much like, not really feeling the jump onto a pirate ship in the middle of the ocean option. <laughs> Might I <laughs> maybe not jump in and... Maybe do you got any sea forms? We could sneak up and just board them and oh, we got plenty. Take the, the people trouble out. is that none of you can breathe underwater. <laughs> that's that's the problem. Like I could turn into a sea dinosaur and just you know catch up to the ship and board it, like punch a hole in the bottom or something. But that how are any of you going to breathe while I'm doing that? I mean, you just solved your own problem there. Punch a hole in the bottom and let let the sea sort it out. <laughs> I, I could, but I'm, I'm assuming Grim doesn't want me to like fucking derail an entire backstory encounter by doing a cheap uh, one like that. I mean, you guys could do that. Um, be a lot of theater of the mind if you want to do that, because I don't have a map for actually assaulting the ship yeah. on the high seas. I think yeah, fair artists will also point out, like, even if we could breathe water or ride Sarath, it's a pirate ship that can probably shoot at things that approach it. Yeah, they would be used to sea monster attacks by now, like and surely. Like, cannons do exist in this world. Ballistas do exist, right? So mm -hmm. like... They could fire into the sea. Like granted, they also wouldn't fire very deep into the sea, but Harpoons would go a little bit further. Yeah, like, they're Cat gonna... Artist pretty much points out, like, they're gonna if we're coming they're probably gonna see us if we're coming by sea so we would have depending, no depending on how she us. approaches it but yeah mm -hmm. i would say Let's... if she approaches it like a hundred feet underwater i don't think they have much of a chance to see her well not you but no. yeah. uh... <laughs> okay then we follow it to its destination and then quietly board and kill everyone there yeah sounds like a plan Artis and Masika in Zendal are like, okay. <laughs> they're, they're all kind of like, uh, I don't know if this is my fight or my dog, but let's see what happens. Um, <laughs> but we're going to beat it, by God. And helping you with Mesra, you owe us this much. Fair. Uh, okay, so let's do some timing stuff here. Um, so how do you want to follow it? Do you just want to keep an eye on it and kind of follow it by by the coastline so you guys can like actually have camping if you need to sleep yeah like because i'm assuming it isn't going at an outrageous pace or anything it's just sailing I want to we, like, it's going we could far. probably keep up with it in that i am if i'm flying us then we could probably keep up with us like you can certainly do the yo-yo thing to keep up with it um yeah, cool. Okay, so let's see here. I'm just going to kind of plop some campsites down. How far does the sailing ship go in a day? I need to look this up on 5E. This is the one thing I didn't think of. I'm guessing less than 60 miles a day, though. 5E <laughs> sailing ship speed. Well, that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. That doesn't even make sense. What doesn't? All speeds for all things are too slow in DV in D and D. <laughs> How fast did a sail frigate travel? Fourteen knots, twenty-six kilometers per hour, sixteen miles per hour. So if a day is twenty-four, twenty-four times sixteen. Yeah, D and D says they travel at two miles an hour. Jeez, that's pathetic. That's, why would you ever have a ship? Um, okay, walk. what did I say? <laughs> I could be a, yeah, if it's a barge. <laughs> 16 miles times 24 hours is 384 miles in a day. Uh, I'm uh, sure. So that's a bit much. Yeah. Say it goes... <laughs> Whatever, we're going to say it takes three days. Um, okay. Because that's... Uh... 
We're going to say it takes an arbitrary amount of time that I may retcon later, but it's probably somewhere between one and three days um, because reasons. Um, so you guys follow the coast. As it gets to the turn in the coast, it that ship uh, heads south. Do you remember what the name of your ship was, Sarath? Uh, shit, I don't think you can get it. Well, it would be you to give me the name. Uh... Shit, I don't know. This is your backstory. I'm just putting plot points in. Yeah, but I thought we were like, you know, I think I remember that the ship was. Oh no, we could just recon that it was like, I don't know, the name was. He renamed it or something. Okay, well, I don't have a name, so that's cool. Oh. I know his name, but I don't know the ship's name. Um, so as he you guys. He was the man with no name. Avalon, that's a fun name. Let's use that. Avalon? Yeah, why not? That's a fun name for a pirate ship. The yeah. Avalon. I'm going to call it Avalon's Revenge. Just because that seems more piratey. Yeah, probably. Keep in mind that the captain was an elf, so. <laughs> Esmerillon Dar's Evanescence. Yeah, you know, fucking obnoxious names like that, so yeah. that's what I figured. Okay, I'm just going to do some map revealage just for the fun of it, because why not? Because you guys are going to follow the path of this on the coast. And we'll kill that. Oh, screw, we're just going to... Fuck this, it's just a bunch of forest. Um, so, as you fly south, hopscotching along, taking your wild shape rests, what have you... Um, the ship does seem to be heading at least either to Refuge Bay or somewhere points further south. Um, as you fly and figure out this this X over here, um, what's that? So kind of oh. here that X. There's literally the wreck of a sailing ship in the middle of the jungle there. Um, huh. For future reference, um, I'm assuming you want to keep following your former pirate ship, not look at the random... Yeah. Ship. Okay. Um, so there's a wrecked pirate... Uh, well, let's just reveal well, the text. Okay. Yeah, keep that as a note, though. Like, we'll mark that down on the map. There you go. <laughs> we'll give it its title. Um, just because, why not? You don't know what the narwhal is. Um, and as you head down, uh, let's see here. You will end up seeing that there are pylons here and there is a pylon here these are those pylons that do the undead stuff um, I'm going to ignore that, that presumably otherwise. have undead people around them too uh, I'm just going to say you can kind of see the clearings like you're a good distance away following the ship <clears throat> pardon me I'm just revealing it on the map so it's there as a point of interest in case you guys want to go back after you follow it. Um, we so must you... destroy all of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so as you guys come around the bay, you do the ship cuts across the mouth of the bay here. Um, and I'll say you're able to, to kind of get across and follow over, and you, you see that the ship ends up anchoring um, off the coast next to another fairly large uh, uh, three master um, and a gr uh, a good chunk of the crew on um, the Avalon's Revenge uh, disembarks and goes into a uh, there appears to be some sort of settlement here um, tucked away in this bay uh, Artis is unaware of it, um, as is Masika. This is an entirely new development for them, that this this settlement exists here. The settlement itself looks to largely be one large building. Um, it has a couple stories built into a cliffside. Uh, it has a couple of outbuildings, and it has kind of perched on top of and into the rocks an enormous nest that is about 40 or 50 feet wide 
Um, and with Thank that, you. I will pause the recording to take a quick break. Square foot Starting plate of iron is, keep talking. is 41.8 pounds. So if it's a 10 square foot, you're talking over 10,000 pounds. Ooh. So if I drop six of those on a ship, it's not going to be great. Yeah, no, we're... You can't. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that'll be fun. <laughs> I'm excited. I mean, let's... let's Let's maybe save this for the finale. Yeah, probably. Whatever was just discussed, I'm kind of excited for. <laughs> um, Bad things are about to happen. Let's just leave it possibly that. Possibly wacky uses for the ring. And, and in fact, we, we might need to discuss this because I, I might be shifting <laughs> alignments again, and I really don't want to. But... What do you mean shifting alignments again? You're already evil. Am I evil? I'm pretty sure you are distinctly evil in Grim Rule that you chasing down helpless drunks and killing them. Hey, they, that that orphanage attacked me first. What what was your initial alignment? Uh God, was it chaotic good? Yeah. So I'm true good. neutral now? I'd say you're probably I lost in alignment. Chaotic neutral. So I'm okay with that. Reactions. Like you I'm drop, not gonna say that's not a, one to you. It's not a <laughs> Full swing, but you know, it was, I don't really feel thought, like it was. I mean, because how many people have gotten carried away in combat? Plus, there's the other thing of the fact that Zendala and Sarath were by far the people who killed the most. Like, well, I think Zendala, Zendala herself probably killed about 30 of them with that ring. I mean, but Zendala had an excuse. Yeah, or Sarath didn't. She just was like, oh, look, a village earthquake. But <laughs> Sarath's already evil, so who gives a shit? Yeah, doesn't. <laughs> She's like, oh well. These things happen, you know? <laughs> bad things happen to bad people. Um, <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, you, can't, you can't make an omelet without breaking a couple of eggs and killing some of the chickens as a reminder to not be so insolent. I hardly think an executive omelet's cracking their eggs. Anyway. <laughs> I just need to remind you that every now and then you just got to sit down in front of that chicken and eat a couple of its eggs just to remind it where its place in life is. Oh, yeah. boy. It's a chicken. It's a <laughs> fucking idiot. It doesn't know. Yeah. Chickens will eat eggs. I've seen them do it. <laughs> <laughs> they are not very bright. Okay, so to, to bring us back around. Uh, so you guys, Sarath, you're following by air i'm assuming everybody else is on your back you see the ship dock next to another ship um mm -hmm. or not dro dock but like drop anchor um yeah just drop back in the air i guess a bunch of rowboats come off of it and go into this cove um that i kind of gave a rough description of um there's a second ship there um uh the first question is, how closely do you follow these ships? Uh, I'd want to stay out of range of the watch, that yeah, the watchman, I guess. Like I don't want to get that close. Okay. Um, Enough to vaguely see what's going on. Yeah, so you because, see the. You know, an elf, so she can see in the dark. Well, I mean. Actually, probably not because you'd be flying too. So. Oh. It's also, I'm going to say that they, the sailors that get off the ship get off during daytime because they're not fucking idiots trying to row into a rocky cove when it's dark. Because um, I know they do that in Pirates of the Caribbean all the time, but that seems like an actually <laughs> terrible fucking idea. Um, yeah, but they can get away with it. 100% is. Part. Yeah. Um, so this cove has... Uh, so you see them go into the cove. Uh, you see a bunch of the, the rowboats... Some of them go into a uh, cave surrounded. It's it's a so part of this thing is built into a cliff. Part of it is built into a little bay. Um, the bay has a couple of little docks. Some of the rowboats go into a, a cave entrance in the cliff itself. Some of them row around to the docks and the the beach and the cove um, that are just slightly to the south of that. Uh, so the question is, where 
do you want to land and what do you want to do? Uh, I'd probably want to land a little bit away from, like, just out of sight of them so we can set up a camp, just so we can all have a long rest before we take this place on. So do you want to go to the north or the south? Uh, north. Okay. As long as it's, yeah, like, not where they can easily see us. But we should be able to see it if a ship just sets sail. Okay, so you guys land to the north. Um, Y'all can take long rests as appropriate. Um, ah! Now I have to, like, do stuff. Party NPCs. Artists. Long rest. Zandala. Long rest. Although she didn't really was. I admit, I was kind of worried enough to, like, maybe consider, like, wild shaping into a sea dinosaur and smashing the rudder while they're docked up, but... Where did I put Masika? I do not know. I'm trying to find her. Sorry, she's not in my... Oh, that's where she is. Okay. That makes sense. And she has ten hit points again. God damn. Damn it. Why does it keep resetting her? Well, there we go. I have reset her myself. Um, it keeps resetting her to 10 hit points. <clears throat> I keep <laughs> manually changing it, but it keeps resetting it. Um, like my AC does the same thing. Yeah. Um, okay, so you guys have your long rest. Um, what do you do? Uh, go investigate. Like, are they those pirates? And I don't think we can exactly just walk right up to the freaking pirate grove or anything like that, can we? Well, it's up to you what you want to do. Uh, it it was a settlement beforehand, right? Like, or is it just pirates? But looks at it. It's to the best of your knowledge, it's this one spot. Like, it's not a city. No, There's it's just a... like a little. It's a, sort of it's a little building with a couple of outbuildings built into a... Oh, so it's a compound. Of yeah. Specifically for... Yep, yeah, okay, fair enough. Well, we can't just walk into that one directly. Um, I guess we approach it and we'll try to sneak around. Or we'll sneak in it, into it. Um, I can cast what you call Muscle that Shreds. I can find it for you. Um, so while you're camping, um, at one point, Artis looks over at you, and he asks you, um, when did you start deciding to wear the ring? Oh. Uh, well, when I knew that sometimes we... Our fights come a little bit too close for comfort. Being chaotic as such, I'd like to have a backup plan. And so at this point, whether you knew it consciously or not, you have the ring on your finger. Oh, um, shit. Like, yeah, she didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so you look down at your hands and you realize that you are wearing the, wing, the ring of winter. Oh, um, shit, I take it off. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that happened. Um, oh, okay. That's concerning. <laughs> <laughs> and an artist says, "You know, I, I know I've asked you before, and I'm not gonna force you, but I'd really recommend you give that back. Um, it's up to you, but I'd recommend you give, let me take that, take that threat off of your, your shoulders." We'll see how tomorrow goes. Not a, an artist just kind of nods, kind of wearily, and he's like, "Okay." Um, <laughs> what did he roll his insight check? He's not. He doesn't need to roll an insight check for this. He's just yeah. he just knows that it's fucking annoying to deal with it. Well, I just, like I said, he's just yeah, <laughs> he's resigned to it. He's not a great guy, but he's not a bad guy, right? Like yeah. He's not going to stab you in your sleep, but he also doesn't want to see somebody, oh. you know, um, 
or your That's good because Eric doesn't sleep. Uh, come by. Uh, you know what I mean. Um, yeah. Yeah, no. Okay. He's not going to like try to do something drastic to get it back. Um, so I know you guys did a bunch of planning. I didn't hear most of it, so that's cool. Um, it's all contingency terrible. plans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In case it goes tits up, we have some plans. Yeah. Um, so artists and Masika and Zendala are all vaguely in on the idea that this captain is a bad dude. Um, bad to Sarah, at least. <laughs> like, he, he, like, at the end of the day, they're all pirates, so... I mean, yeah, but I guess it's it's the idea that, like, um, you know, in discussion, you know, if, if it, they're, they're all like, well, we're gonna... We've got your backs for now. Like, obviously, you know, it sounds like this guy just mutinied and killed your crew and that seems bad so they're um yeah a little bit <laughs> well i like especially since she known them for longer than most of these people have been alive yeah uh i mean that they're with you to an extent if that makes sense yeah. right like like if she starts massacring the town they're probably gonna nope out uh yeah so um so you want to approach with pass without trace uh yes on the castle without Oh, yeah. Saturday crew. Ba -ba -ba. So yeah, go ahead and cast that, um, just so that it uses the spell slot, and then I'm gonna get this. No, I just had to find it in the thing, that's all. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then I need Thursday group by... Oh, not Thursday group, Saturday group. It's Saturday. Um, my whole life is a lie. Uh, <laughs> okay, let oh. me activate this oh well, that's what uh oh I'm okay no, i'm just Mercana's working oh the scene's working weird so uh you're coming in the are you coming in in the morning or at night uh, at night hopefully. okay then fine i will have I'm... darkness in place yeah, but we'll, we'll probably need it if we're sneaking around. Okay. Rock nest. Hello. <laughs> um, did the map load? No, but I'll see the name. Oh. Oh, there we go. I think I there's there's three maps, but that's because there's multiple floors. So just so you guys know, every floor is a different map. Uh, let me preload all of them just in case it matters. Um, so yeah, you guys are able to, to kind of find a, a path that's just a little bit outside of this or like a clearing, I guess. Um, and I've put you guys on the top of the screen. Um, oh, pardon me. You are on? Good sale. It's 11 o'clock for me. I'm tired. Um, right. well, we understand. Yeah. Well, everybody except, well, you everybody there's two people here besides me um <laughs> so you guys find uh where they've there's a, you, you approach i'll say from a an area that's cleared uh just to the north of the camp just kind of like some some various there's a wagon a building or two but there's nobody there um as you get a little closer um Mercana, do you use your glowy axe or no I'm going to leave it off because we're approaching quietly. Okay, so you're going to be in the dark um, to some degree. It's it's going to be Sarah's show, right? Because you can't see at night. Um, can any of the other characters see at night? Zendala should be able to if she's an elf. Sarah and Zendala can. Um, Artist can't. Uh, Masika is also human. So uh, Zendala and Sarah can see at night. Um, nobody else can. So, Sarah. Oh, sorry. Uh, as you approach, there's a <clears throat> from the north. Um, I guess everybody give me just general stealth checks right now, plus ten. Uh, okay. You both got twenty-three. Cool. Um, so as you approach from the north, uh. Even as close as you are, you can hear lots of sound coming from this building. 
Um, so there's there's a kind of a turret with a crane. That's what you can see directly south of you. So that looks like the so top I... of uh, like a loading crane of some sort. Yeah. Um, there appears to be kind of to the southeast um, over here where I'm pinging, if that's working. Um, that looks like a little warehouse uh, in this clearing, and there are a couple of pirates, uh, just pirate crew members, uh, just kind of uh, moving stuff about here. And then to the south is, you can just see the main uh, body of that building. Um, I will say, so the jungle here, like the green parts, that is dense jungle. Um, okay, so we could probably go in there to stealth, because I feel like if we're on this road, we're not really <laughs> hiding very well. Yeah, I just had to push somewhere. Um, yeah. So just move yourselves wherever, and I'll just adjust the party if it becomes an issue. I'll just let the... the... You can just move, like, whoever, and if something comes up, I'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, can I just, like, grab, like, their oh, sleeve or Zendala and just, like, follow them? I mean, I'm assuming that you guys are... Like, you can see a little bit. Um, okay. It's just you, you don't have dark vision, right? So, like... I don't have Always. an in-between of vision or no vision. Why are you putting everything oh, okay. on top of each other? Uh, because I can't see, because I was clicking on Artis, and now he has no vision, so... Oh, okay. Um, fair enough. I'll click on my character anymore. <laughs> um, and I'll just move oh. Masika down with you guys. Um, yeah, so there, it, it seems like there's four people, four pirates you can see in this central area. Uh, there's also Sarath a great in the middle of that clearing. Um, that looks just That's great so downwards. Can you delete the extra token, please? Why are there two Sarahs? Because I couldn't see where um, Sarah was. Cool. Thank you. Okay, well, we could use that crane, maybe, and like get the drop of these guys, but... Uh... So and what, you can also know um, beyond the crane. So the edge of the jungle and between the crane and the building, there is a drop off. Hmm. Do I know what they're talking about? Or are they like speaking in Cholton or something? Oh, those pirates? They're just grumbling about having to to do this shit work while, uh, <laughs> while everybody else is inside enjoying themselves. Hmm. I might try to just... Maybe we could sneak up. There's no one up there, so. How high is that jungle, I guess, next to the um, loading tower? Uh, so if you get up to the edge, it's about, let's say, it's about a story down from here. Well, I can't, like, climb that or anything. At least, oh, I could go up those steps, I guess, couldn't I? And still stay hidden. You can try. <laughs> okay, well, in that case... Um, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you before you well, try to do that what's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know. Like, you're definitely being stealthy and you have path, 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 path without faith. Path without faith? Yeah, path yeah, without faith. Um, like, you guys are doing that. Um, I will disguise myself as a part, you know similar to what they are. I'm going to add a light source here because it seems like there would be torches outside. Yeah, because like these guys wouldn't operate in the dark. So let me just put some light sources. I'm going to put two light sources in. Let me just let me just do some lighting real quick. Yep. Cuz I lit the inside of this, but I didn't light the outside. Because I honestly didn't think about approaching at night. So that's what I get. But hey. Ah, so we we're supposed to do this peacefully. Or brazenly. Well, the yeah. joy Big of balls. having DM powers is... Uh, God, I love Foundry. So can you see a little bit now, Maricana? I can see fantastically now. I can at least see people. Okay, yeah, so th that's who you can see. Um, there's a torch, kind of, there's a door here-ish. 
and a door to the warehouse here. Um, let me see. Oh, wow. Okay, let me... Uh, that's a door. And it's... Let me add doors, because apparently I didn't add freaking doors to those. That would make sense, huh? Sorry. Okay, there we go. Have I missed any other doors? Jesus. Oh my god. I didn't add any doors to this map. <laughs> oh my god. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I just trapped inside. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, okay, there. I think I have all the doors on this map set up. Cool. Okay. And then you should see little door icons. Um, hey, I do. Oh, they are open. Or at least that one's open. Yeah. So the warehouse is open because these guys are moving crates and stuff in between, like, the carts and the barrels and all the stuff. They're just moving stuff back and forth. You know, doing inventory, moving shit around. Hmm. Menial dock work, basically. Or the equivalent thereof. Sarah, you as a pirate recognize this as, you know, sorting out the, the loot from the supplies from whatever. Yeah. Um, well, with my current disguise as a uh, pirate, I will try and approach... Yeah, fuck it, we might as well approach. Oh, that's more fun. Hey? What's that? Oh, it's behind a crate. Music? Uh, negative. Oh, well, whatever. I can. Um, it'll be fun for the recording. <laughs> Maybe not for me. <laughs> oh. um, Right, up here let's first. see how we're going to do this. Can I see over that ledge? No. Um, sure, it's let not. me delete it. So just note that... Ah, crap. Uh, you can't... So the ring in this turret, you would have to jump down. Um, no, I'm not going to try to look on I'm just like, you know, using yeah. that as cover to peek yeah. over. Sure. So you see below a... Uh, rough cobble plot uh, not plaza but a rough cobble like courtyard area where there is the the crane goes down to a platform covered in crates and stuff but basically uh you know that there's a dock south of here like the little dock is to the south of this map um and this is basically where stuff that needs to go from down there up to the, the storehouse up here gets winched up on that crane rotated over and dropped in that pile by a kind of the pirate closest to you. Hmm. I'm going to try and do a classic Metal Gear Solid move. Broom. Yeah, basically. Um, I'm going to pretend to be an ignorant fucking dock worker and start operating this winch thing and try to drop it on one of those guys or near them so that one of them comes over. So you're going to try and winch something up and yeah, and then, like, because by the looks of it, that can, like, drop to around about here-ish and make a racket. Um, sure. So as you winched up and it kind of gets... starts swinging around, uh, we'll say one of these guys is in the storehouse, uh, the other one is kind of bitching to him in the doorway, and the other two are like, <laughs> Huh? Being what? council workers. What, what's going on here? And as, as the winch comes over, they both uh, start moving over to go towards the winch itself, because they're like, what? Yeah. Why, why is the winch moving? Um, I'll start this crouch behind it, hopefully. Okay. I don't know if she even can, because that looks... Um, I mean, it's dark. Oh, um, and, it, and she's a wood elf, so she can hide in light cover. Okay, so you are hidden. Um, I would dare say the party really... is too knows what the fuck's going on besides Zendara, uh, like Zendara. well everybody i guess everybody else can see this to some degree because there's a little bit of light um and I'm assuming these guys move? have a light themselves i moved have like you guys a... just to i moved you just oh to... okay I'm on, I'm on somebody like assuming Weird. that you are like close to the edge of the forest ah oh, yes right like um also within 30 feet which is my forest radius yeah, so uh, 
these guys are approaching Sarath, do you do anything? Um, they're still approaching, right? Because I want them to be completely out of line of sight. So they're both I... walking we... towards you. Um, and I'll say at this point, they, they come up. Yep. And as they both get up here, they, regardless of the fact that you're hiding, as they get up on this platform, yeah, that... they can see yeah. you. And they're like, hey, yeah, what? I... And I'll just tell them, ah, oh, sorry about that, blokes. Guys, I'm just, I'm new to the job here. I don't know how to use this thing properly. Uh, make a, either a persuasion or a deception check, I guess, depending on how you're doing it. Uh, shoot. Persuasion. Wait, sorry, persuasion or what? Well, you're either deception. trying to persuade them or deceive them. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, so Quick you, question. You st- yeah, Mark. Is this guy that I'm measuring at? Is he in line aside of us? He's so he's in partial cover. Um, he's there's a wagon between you. Um, you know, he can't like, see us. I mean, right now he is completely unaware of you. Um, All right. As are the can I make guys. a can I make a stealth attack against him? Um, not quite yet. Um, just because I want to resolve Sarah's bit. Um, okay. Unless were you gonna attack him as he walked up? No, I was. I was waiting for them to get agitated with Sarah, so they're okay. completely <laughs> focused on her, and then I just want to axe him right in the back of the neck. But continue. Um. So Sarah, you you try to dissemble, and they're just not having any of it. They're like. <laughs> You're not part. We don't write. There's no new people here in the middle of the night, and they both draw their scimitars uh, and start approaching um, to attack. This I'll say, Mar- dodge action. Uh, Marcana, you would get a free like surprise attack here. Hmm. So whatever surprise attack you want to do, go ahead and do it. Just because Sarath, you can't really surprise them at this point. <laughs> I mean, I could by turning into a bear. That'd be surprising. Well, <laughs> not in the surprise get... round sense. Do I attack with normal or advantage? You're uh, flanking him because they're both approaching me, so... Well, oh, I, it's still true. a normal attack. You don't have, like, sneak attack, so it would just be a normal attack. Yeah, but it'd be okay. done with advantage, wouldn't it? Because he, he's completely unaware of him and approaching me, so... Oh, yeah, that's fine, the thing whatever. I didn't know about, because he's... So you cleave this pirate in half, like you just, your axe just <laughs> like you just kill him. Um, he's dead. Uh, Sarah, go ahead and I call out to him and say, "Scream!" and your whole crew dies. Well, I mean that guy doesn't even. This is all kind of happening concurrently. So he doesn't. Well, so I'm gonna have no. you in the pirate roll initiative. Um, just to see. I need to declare a dodge action first. I would like to save it. That doesn't necessarily mean that. Well, roll initiative, and if you go first, you can either attack or dodge. Kind of fun thing. Sorry. There you go. Can I just say this is going exactly how I thought it was going to go, which is yeah. sideways from the get-go. <laughs> okay. So, Sarah, you get to go first. So you could either dodge or attack. It's up to you, or do whatever. It's up to you. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I will. I guess I'll attack. Fuck it. Okay. The rest of the pirates don't. So the, well, go ahead. Do your attack. Um. Shoot. Where the fuck is? All right. I found my freaking. Throw a dagger at his head. So a ten. Uh, wow, that'll hit. Okay. Um, huh. Fair enough. Let's see. So uh, the dagger uh, slams into him. Uh, it, it it wounds him pretty badly, but does not kill him. Um, 
Um, and if I have another weapon in my offhand, I say another dagger, I think we can throw that as well. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, based on... Oh, don't rust his dagger. I mean, you don't it? even need to throw it at him, you could have just stabbed him. Oh, yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> Theatrics! <laughs> yeah, exactly, it looks cool, dude. Oh, let's get the same roll again, okay. Cool, so that, that second been dagger, a... so your first dagger hits him, the second one drops him. Uh, wow, that is the exact same roll. So, he is dead. Right, me too. Uh, <laughs> from the commotion... Gonna grab my... Huh? My daggers. Sure, um, the other pirate... Uh, let's see, well, whose turn is it? Sarath, it's Mercana's. Mercana, it's your turn. Do you want to... Yeah, but didn't we kill them in... Oh, actually, no, because, yeah, they called out, didn't they? Yeah. I was going to well, say we could have we killed I them mean, self, you're but... within about 30 feet of that other guy, so brutally murdering two people uh, does make a little bit of noise. At least the Great Axe did. And they were like, <laughs> hey, what are you doing here? So uh, the pirate by the door is definitely aware of what's going on at this point. Okay, fair enough. Fantastic. Like I said, sideways from the get-go. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I get for rolling a two on my deception. That's <laughs> what we get for not having me do the deception. Yeah. By all so, means. Oh, don't, I'm going to. Don't mind some tokens sorry. disappearing real quick. Very by accident, so. Just trying to measure shit. Okay. Let's go with it anyway, it's still. Okay. Well, I'm going to. I mean, this is cover right here, isn't it? It's a wall. It's like For that. partial cover. It's not a big wall. But it's enough to duck down behind, right? Yeah. All right. I am going to move there. I guess. Uh, I hate hate starting this fight without accurate information on how many people are here. What the hell? What? Nothing. But not record? To, no, I'm trying to update some shit that's not doing what I wanted. Our plan B is still available. I, it, we may have to go to plan B. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I don't want to pop it just yet. As Grim said, there was multiple sections to this uh, place. Let's avoid general alarm going out. Right, I am going to uh, grab this dude right here and drag his... Oh, someone took damage. I'm, I'm testing corp. something. Sorry, don't. Obviously, there's a big number here. Flash off is like, no, okay. <laughs> Don't worry. This is not relevant to combat. I'm just fixing things okay. in case you guys decide to murder hobo the whole fucking island. Oh, yeah, I tried not to. <laughs> I yeah, really I say we're, we're trying to be good for once. I know. I'm just. I did not add blood to any tokens. So I'm doing that. But what are you doing, Marcana? Uh, the guy that I cleaved him to, I was going to grab him and toss him over the other side of the wall so he's out of sight. Oh. Granted, there's a giant blood spot there, but whatever. I think the guy, though, like... What? Well, I think you said that, you know... Um, oh, wait, they're aware of us, aren't they? As at least. And you probably told his buddy who's right next to him. Yeah. So I think the best hope for is clear out these ones and then hope that the next area goes a little bit more quietly. Oh, I can make it to that storehouse in one move. You can? Sweet. Yeah, I'm trying to... Why the hell doesn't that work? Weird. I don't know. Anyway. Alright, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a poor decision and you might have to plan B my ass. <laughs> it's fine with me. Is it your go? Are you gonna, what are you going to do? Uh, uh, I am going to run out enraged and... Oh, 
Okay, a 13 hits for 10. Um, Add two for rage. Oh, you kill him. You just you just oh. cleave that guy too. He is done. There is a another pirate right behind him who is uh Nope. Nope. Not having that. <laughs> <Stop. laughs> uh, I'll just leave. Let's add that guy to the combat order. <laughs> He's not dead. Um, okay. Is he is he in barbarian range? How far is that, did you uh, no, that's right. I moved 30 feet, so I can't... I can't reach him. Oh! Then I'm going to... Can I move again after axing, uh, attacking? Yeah, you can take him wherever in the turn. I'm going to step right on top of the body and axe him in the face. Okay. Let me show you the light! So that's... And 11. That will take him out, too. So, congratulations. You have killed all the pirates that you know of out here. I'm going to search them, see if they had anything uh, of good use. Uh, let's see here. Roll a 2d20. So you find 23 gold, and they all have uh, cutlasses, swords, scimitars, various edged weapons of molly make and manufacture. Uh, I guess we just take the gold. Probably don't need the scimitars and shit lugging around. No. I mean, you would rapidly run into a situation where you can't carry it. Well, I think we're already very close to that anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they didn't have any like orders or anything like that, I guess. Oh, they probably wouldn't have. They'd just get told what to do. Ah, uh, you don't, you don't find any documentation on them. If you're... Yeah. <laughs> I suppose the average pirate isn't even liquid. So. They're, they're pirates, not a military organization. Um, I guess we, I'll try and drag these bodies into the, like that jungle area to try and hide them. If that even means anything, probably not. I, I cut two of them and three of them in half. So it doesn't matter. Sarah, she's well, eating people. But... Grievous wounds, whatever. Yeah, I was gonna say they're gonna be leaking like a. I, I don't even know. <laughs> they're gonna be leaking oh. everywhere. Artist is like, well, you guys are nothing if not efficient. <laughs> How are you? Off uh, the Sarah, Jesus Christ! Turn, I, I don't know. Turns around to her and smiles and says, "Thank you." <laughs> Maricana just just kind of like grunts, is like, "Well, that that went sideways really fast." Um, and I'm gonna grab these bodies and drag them over into the woods. So from the uh, sure, um, so the bodies are in the woods. Drag tower into blood with them. That way we can I make mean, it that... look like there's an animal attack. I could very easily attack. wild shape and then, like rip into them so it does look like an animal attack. But... That wastes a wild shape. Yeah, I'd rather not. And I'm an off animal. the grid again. <laughs> I wonder if I can do this for everyone at once. Hmm? I'm just trying settings on my side for fun. Nope, that okay, so work. that's that's the front door pretty clearly. Yeah, so at this point you can hear um, from inside the building in front of you, the main building, um, lots of raucous noise um, from inside that building. They still sound like they're partying or like they're getting ready to do something? Uh, it sounds to you like... Um, a bunch of pirates at a tavern or a bar or something. Oh, so they probably didn't even fucking notice. Sweet. Uh, is there a roof to this place that we can climb on, or is that, like, not really mapped out? I mean, there's a roof above this that kind of abuts next to the... Uh, what can you see, Sarah? I'm, I'm going to make a terrible suggestion, um, since we are very clearly outnumbered. 
Sorry, Sarah, can you see the giant nest to the to the west? Or no? No. You can see that mark pretty much where my mouse is. Okay, so you can just see there the edge of the giant nest I was talking about. Um, yeah. And there's like a ship mast sticking out of it. Um, the building itself is just south of you, and the, there's a roof above basically the floor that you're at. Um, so this is like the top level of the building that you're looking at the door to. Um, and then there's another level. You there, there's another level below, um, and then the level below that cobblestone area uh, that leads just on the other side of the building to the docks and the a little beach. Yeah, fair enough. I'm gonna make a terrible suggestion. Earth mold the door shut and toss a fireball through the window. <laughs> what what happened to not wanting to murder Hobo this entire well, encounter? There's no windows and the door is made out of wood, so good job. So we open the door, toss a fireball through, then earth mold it closed. Is in like wedge it closed? Yes, just so they can't get out uh... from the impending firestorm. <laughs> I don't have fireballs, but I guess Andala does. But I don't know. I should be. I think should be game for that. <laughs> um. No, there's there's other ways we can deal with this. Don't worry. Hmm. You could try the deception trick again, but you've got higher charisma than me, so you could try that. I don't think disguise self looks on other people just by the name. Uh, shoot. I suppose if I, like, opened the door a crack and peeked around it, can I, like, to, like, peer into the room? Can I do that while still hidden or something, I guess? Because I still um, have parts of that. But yeah, I mean, I you have to use a stealth roll to see if you could pull that off. So if you want to do that, you can definitely stealth, so you'd have a 32 stealth and open the door. Cool. Um, so you open the door. You can only see um, one person, but you can definitely hear. Um, there's more. There's there's definitely a good number of people in this room. Um, from what you can, see, the one person you can see, you can kind of make out. There's a stairwell, um, kind of directly in front of you, going down to the level below. Uh, and then this room, it it sounds like. You know, you can hear a bunch of pirates basically drinking and, you know, laughing, yelling at each other, etc. But there's definitely quite a few people in the room in the door you just opened. And there's more sounds coming from the stairwell below. We could, we could try this uh, by asking for the captain, but I'm not really sure if that had even resulted in anything besides a fight. Shit. Um, mm. It's a trouble because we're here for a revenge mission, so like, <laughs> what the fuck are we supposed to do besides kill them all? Um, Where so are you there's going? no windows you played. I was did you, just seeing. Did you jump down the cliff? Oh, it's a cliff. Oh. Yeah, if you jump <laughs> down, there's. You're gonna have to try to get back up. Okay, never mind. I for some reason didn't realize that was a cliff. Yeah, that's kind of a one-way trip, or at least a one-way <laughs> down. Broken leg longer, trip. Well, not a broken leg. Like you can easily jump down, but getting back up is gonna like you're gonna have to climb a cliff to get back up. So it's like 10, 15 feet. So like again, it's not terrible, but if you jump down there, you know that you're gonna have to climb back up <laughs> can i see a door down there is there an entrance um so from what you can see from that little area there as you kind of clamber over those barrels there's a turret that juts out from the main building and then a path the cobbles go down you assume to where the little docks are um for like dinghies and rowboats and stuff hmm, are there any doors to the uh, lower floors you don't see any doors from where you are. 
plan. We could set a fire and try to draw them out that way. That's going to draw a lot of them out. Better off to fight them in the halls. Here. <laughs> uh, How do you keep getting off grid? I, I, I'm not on a grid. It's weird. I can move it anywhere. In that nest? Can I like see it from here? Or? So it's the like nest is actually broken for me. above you. Um, okay. Let me just double Wait. check the scene configure. Yeah, it's got a Not grid. I don't know why you're able to not move on it. No, I mean, I could. I just didn't know if I should approach it that quickly. You know, like, oh, that nest. So you, you, you can see the edge of the nest, but you can't see into that nest. It's like that nest is above you, right? Like the, the building. Yeah, like it, it extends kind of above the roof of the building. I'm onto that mast thing, or is that like way high too? Um, you could try to clamber up the trees into it and get up there. Okay. Do I need to roll like acrobatics or something? I guess. Or... No, I'd say like you can you can do it. It just takes yeah, just you just have to do it. Just have to focus on doing so. Yeah. yeah. Like you're not gonna cast a spell while climbing up onto the mast. Um, <laughs> Because that mast is just sticking out of the side of that nest. Yeah. I suppose, like, a fucking 60-pound elf isn't going to, like, upset it. No, you don't. I mean, there's a little sway, but not a whole lot. Um, She's going along it to see if there's anything inside the nest. So you're going up to the edge of the, kind of the, the edge of yeah. where the nest comes over. Yeah. So I'm going to put you yeah. here. Well, whenever you're done, and I have a plan. you see sleeping in the nest is a rock a rock that doesn't look like a rock well it's a rock it is an it enormous looks... bird with uh yeah I mean those things that you can skip along the water no drop the K <laughs> <laughs> this enough. is a um... gargantuan sleeping bird that is in the middle of that nest just kind of huddled with its you know head turned backwards it's actually if you didn't know that a rock was a terrifying creature of mythology it would be almost cute um yeah some monstrosities hmm? are they, it's still a beast right is it tamed or are they yeah, tameable they've got it so freaking close to the building they must have done something to it um you don't know if this rock is tame or wild. Uh, more, is it a beast or, or at least classified as a beast, I should uh, say. Do a nature check? Shit. I um, feel like I could do a quick guidance on that one, but... Uh, nature. So you're, Ten probably doesn't. you're pretty sure it's a monstrosity, but you don't really, like, you don't really know. Yeah. Damn it. Okay. Oh, it's because like, I've got that ring of animal friendship, so I could possibly try to get it to not kill us or something like that. Damn it. Okay. Uh, this, other than being on top of it, there's no, like, doors or anything like that, is there? No, it's just a nest kind of nestled into the side of the cliff in the building. Okay. I guess I'll just climb down then, like, roughly the same way I got back up. Okay. Damn, okay. Well, it looks like we have to go inside the building. Well, I got a plan, if you're ready. Plan. Uh, I'm going to throw in a distraction and we're going to do our thing. <laughs> and I have a hell of a distraction. Yeah, fair enough. And so, at this point, Masika just kind of says quietly, So are you trying to kill one person or all the pirates? I'm after one in particular. And she's like, is there any, like... I don't know. 
way to challenge one pirate, or do you have to fight all the pirates? Well, we can challenge it, but... Okay, why not? Hmm. See, arm rain just like scratches his chin. I will. Should I just, like stroll in and proclaim myself the pirate king and say I'm going to challenge the, the. Is that Where a thing, that pirates? Would... You can try it. You know what? No, if you're not the pirate king, I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> And I loudly declare my challenge for, um, shit, what was the guy's name again? Oh, Zane? Down. Yeah. So I, challenge, I hereby challenge one direction for leadership of the band. And all of the pirates in this room just kind of, they all fall silent and turn and stare at you. And they're like, and they all draw their weapons, right? So, like, this is the perfect shing, 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 shing and silence falls in this room. I say that, but they're all clustered together so I could kill them all with one spell. And uh, this this rougher looking guy here with the bandana says, you challenge who? Yeah, you heard of him? Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I said Zane. You heard of him. <laughs> okay. Well, we can go get him. But uh, your funeral, and he just kind of leers at you. Um, <laughs> and so uh, the rest of you are all outside, right? Yeah, well, it's just Sarath in there at the moment. Okay, so the commander says, come with me. And he walks over and these guys kind of all come to flank. Um, are you standing in the doorway there, Americana? Or out of sight? I was just kind of... I was just kind of peering around the corner, but I'm out of sight. Do a do a stealth check just to see if you're able to like get out of line of sight quick enough as they all come up. Where's my stealth chill chill? <laughs> <laughs> so this Rip. guy sees Murakana. Um, let me roll a stealth check for Zendala real quick. Death are within my aura, kind of, but yeah, I don't know just... if it's because they're fucking out in plain sight. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so she got a fourteen. What's his perception? Okay, um, I'll say Zandala actually manages to duck in. She just passes that that check because there's a wall there, kind of. Um, and so this guy says, "Oi, there's another one back there." And they all kind of glare at you. And uh, did you really? Mur 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 kind of sticks his head through the door and is like, "Don't mind me, I'm with her." Okay, so you come in. Um, so the rest of them are gonna hang back because they don't really feel like being caught by the pirates quite yet. Um, yeah. So they all kind of gesture that you guys should go down the stairs. Um, I don't mind, but I'm kind of worried for Americana because I can escape with the fucking bonus action, whereas you cannot. I'm a brick wall. Yeah, that's true. It'd take a while to kill you. Yeah. Okay, one second here. Let me, uh... So I'm moving your character just for reasons. Because I want to be oh. able to select a bunch of stuff and copy it. And then... No, nope, that's not the right one. Activate this map. And... No token. I know you don't have a damn token. Just <laughs> chill. <laughs> I didn't know where you were coming from. So there's Murakana. There's Sarath. And then if I just cool. paste a whole bunch of guys... So you guys go down the stairwell. Um, I don't know why that door is open. It should be closed. Um, so you guys are... Uh, oh, can you see anything yet? Oh, yeah. There I can see goes. everything. Okay, so you guys are in a large tavern room. There is a... Uh, kind of to the, to the north side of the room, there is a large golden 
colored bone claw. Uh, Shit, I was going to say it's a giant banana. Huh? I was going to say it looked kind of like a giant banana that was half peeled. So that's actually the an, an incredibly large bone claw that makes up the bar top there. Um, as you can see, this room is full of uh, various pirates from the crews of, you assume, at least the two ships. Uh, there's a bar uh, tender behind the bar. There's a couple of doors behind the barway, a door to the south out, and a door to the east out. Um, and this first commander comes in and says uh, quite loudly, uh, as, as the room kind of goes a little more quiet as you guys are escorted down and says one of these guys wants to challenge Zane and then there's just uproarious laughter from most of the room um, there's also uh, do you try to move there oh probably bad here I guess okay cool yeah you can kind of stay in that right. little area because um, everybody in here is just eyeing you guys right like this is not a friendly uh, <laughs> room that you're in um just so you... reminds me of high school reminds you of high school <laughs> um there's also a stairwell um off to the west um going up and there's a balcony up there uh that has probably another uh 10 or 15 pirates up there um one of the pirates towards the bar says um really and the commander just walks over and cracks him across the face and says go tell zane um, <laughs> and he says okay uh, and he kind of goes <laughs> okay <laughs> and he goes back into a door behind the bar um oh. <laughs> uh, presumably to go talk to zane uh presumably yeah presumably uh, okay, let's see here. Sorry, I left this very open-ended so tokens are all over the place because I had no idea how you guys were going to actually approach this. Um, you see a Walk group... in the middle. Huh? <laughs> Walk in the middle. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, I mean, so... I can fucking plane shift, so I don't care. <laughs> what are they going to do about it? <sighs> Who knows? Um... So you see a group of pirates um, on the balcony, one in particular, a rather rakish looking man who's dressed slightly nicer than everybody else, uh, get up and, and move towards the stairwell and walk down. Um, and I just copied a bunch of guys in here. Uh, so one guy comes down. Uh, this fellow is the rakish one. He also has just a enormous... Cameraman. Well, cameraman's pinging because cameraman oh, pinged. I thought um, that was his name. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, there's no names because you don't know who any of these people are. Um, I don't recognize any of them as Zane. No, you don't recognize anyone here as Zane. Um, oh. Yeah, you don't You don't see anyone here you really recognize. I mean, they all look like pirates. These all look like people that you know. Or oh, not she's know, disguised but... as one, so she hasn't dropped it yet. Well, you always look like a pirate. Um, oh, yeah, but she looks like a different part. She's like a different pirate. Oh, so you don't look like Sarath. She disguised herself, remember? Okay. No, obviously not. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was why I was using that deception thing. I disguised myself as one of them and well, was I mean... pretending to be a fucking idiot, like deckhand or something. You still failed. Um... Yeah. I'm going to say a two a doesn't fool <laughs> anybody. At this point, they think you're actually not a pirate. Is, is what's happening like they think you were pretending to be a pirate um which so, technically that is true <laughs> I, fair enough so anyway uh to describe this room so yeah uh this rakish fellow comes down the stairs with his retinue um i'm gonna kind of move some tokens in a weird way just to show loose affiliation um he also has a truly enormous uh, you can't tell if it's a half orc or a full orc with him. Um, a couple other pirates and one guy with a beard who just looks like a madman. Uh, and from across the room, uh, that 
slightly more dapper and more groomed fellow uh, calls out, Well, I'll, uh, I'll entertain our guest until Zane comes. And this commander over here that had escorted you down shouts, And who made you boss? And the, the dapper guy draws his sword and says, uh, I'm happy to to test blades with you if you would like to fight. And the other guy just kind of grunts and says, well, you're a prisoner. And he pushes you forward a little bit, Sarath. Um, uh, I grapple him if he does that. Okay, go ahead. With and acrobatics. Make an acrobat. Uh, grappling is an attack check. Uh, pretty sure it's acrobatics to... Um... Gonna make me look up acrobatics and athletics. Yeah, 95%. Well, let's do it. Oh, you used an attack action to make a special thing. Yeah, you have to make an attack action. Suck it, Sarath. You have to make an attack to grapple him. Damn it. Um. Can I just dodge his shove then? Because <laughs> I have fucking 20 AC. Uh, no, you can try to grapple him or you can get shoved. Uh, nah, fuck it. But I'll you... look back at him and I'll just tell him that I'll remember that one. And he just kind of glares at you in a piratey way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Murakana, you can follow or you will be forced to follow. I want to lean over near him and be like, careful, I've seen her violate people with trees. <laughs> what? I've done no such thing. And he just spits on the floor. Just like no response to that. Um, so basically, you guys are going to go... Do you, do you follow the guy who called out to you? Yeah, like he's over there, isn't he? Like that dude? Yeah. Yeah, So then what, well. what we are going to do is a quick map change so he he takes you guys uh upstairs to the balcony let me drag your tokens over um so again you're still surrounded by pirates but these pirates have slightly different uh look like a slightly different bunch uh and this guy invites you to uh have a seat at the table or tables that he is at um the orc kind of standing behind his shoulder do you accept the invitation uh sure okay um let's see a couple of the pirates over here move to kind of keep an eye on this stairwell uh and so as you sit down uh this fellow again his his clothing is pretty nice for a pirate, Sarath. Um, his hair is, yeah. is actually like raked back in a way where it looks like this guy actually cares what he looks like as opposed to most of the people in this room who you don't want to get within 10 feet of uh, <laughs> on, on pain of olfactory uh, ramifications. Um, yeah. And so he kind of smirks at you all and he says, so you're looking for Captain Zane, huh? Well, and at I'm... this point, Sarah Sorry, drops her disguise to so show what she really looks like. And uh, this guy just kind of arches an eyebrow and grins a little bit as you do that and goes, Oh, well, the first disguise probably got you in more trouble. Uh, and just laughs to himself. But, uh, obviously you're here. Um, so you're looking yeah, for Zion. Yeah. yeah, we have some unfinished business. It's been long overdue. weren't perchance part of the crew that he uh, appropriated, are you? I would be indeed. One of the last, in fact. So, uh, I is, is your business with Zane or anyone else? 
Mostly with Zane, though I suppose the uh, gentleman who escorted me has managed to find his way onto that list as well. And uh, this guy kind of shrugs and waves a hand, and he's like, "Well, if you were on Zane's, cr- or if you were on that crew, you know how this works. Uh, everybody follows the strongest man or woman on the ship." Uh, oh, uh, my name's Laskalar. Uh, can I inquire as to your Laskalar. name? I'm just writing his name. <laughs> yeah. Laskalar, right? Uh, yeah, I'll just tell him that my name is Sarah. And he nods and he looks at the at, at Yumura Kana and this strapping specimen, uh, <laughs> who might you be? I am Murakana. <laughs> Laskalar kind of furrows his eyebrows and says, hmm, I'm not familiar with which which realm that name is from. Where, where do you hail from? I came from the Deep Force, but truthfully, I don't quite know. I've only recently been told I'm not a dragon, so life's a little confusing lately. Last color looks to you, Sarath, and says, Sarath, who is face palming? <laughs> is your friend always this interesting? Unfortunately, yes. Fair enough. I was I was raised by a dragon. Don't judge too hard. I'm I'm sure you were. I'm I'm sure you were. Okay. Um... <laughs> Just to placate him. I mean, he's not being, like, a dick. He just... No, but he's like, yeah. Everybody I'm, I'm thinks sure, I'm dude. insane, and I'm okay with this. And, and Dude, the... yeah, look at your fucking character icon, Mike. Of course he's fucking crazy. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry, that character icon is perfect, and nobody can tell me otherwise. This is the best <laughs> yeah, character really icon ever. Screaming, screaming Arnold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to hear the lamentation of their women and children. Um... <laughs> And see them driven before you. Yeah, uh, and the orc just kind of goes, mm, uh, and just kind of looks you up and down, Murakana. Uh, <laughs> Murakana just kind of looks back and grunts and has an approving look. <sighs> Careful, you're gonna start a love tryst. I was gonna say, does the orc <laughs> lower makes... or blow a kiss at you? I can't. Tell. <laughs> um, I mean, you made eye contact, so I mean, as far as most bar magazines are seen, like. That's pretty much enough. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so Laskalar uh, looks to you, back to you, Sarath, and says, "Well, you know how this works. You've you've called Zane out. Um, I hope you have a plan because he's probably going to come back here, and uh, well, that'll end one way or another. Um, the best I can do is." I think my interests align with yours to some degree, so if you can best Zane, or if you find yourself... I'm quite confident we can. Well, I, can. I mean, it's just going to be you and him. Yeah, and that's not a man. Sorry. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to make assumptions, but you look like you're about 80 pounds soaking wet, so forgive me. Uh, and she just raises a cast produce flame but doesn't like throw it or anything yeah, just hold yeah. It. and he one of the pirates kind of starts to pull his his sword and Zane or uh, Laskalar just mm-hmm. waves his hand at the guy like just calm down calm down I wouldn't <laughs> um, and Laskalar says well if you if you find uh, the altercation not going your way and you can make some sort of diversion we may be able to assist you um, I'm I'm no fan of Zane, but um, this conversation is obviously not happening. Hmm? What? What do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about? What? Wait, wait, what? Did I miss a step? Like, what? You you just said this conversation is not happening. I was like, what? Why? Yeah, gotcha. Um. Wait, are you agreeing to that, or are you actually asking why? No, you just said this conversation isn't happening. Laskalar said this conversation is obviously not happening. Uh, how do you mean? 
Mira uh, kind of leans up, ribs her. It means that this conversation is not happening. Really? And Zane, or uh, Lasko, I keep saying Zane. God, I've been thinking about <laughs> Zane for so long. Finally figured this out. Uh, well, Lasko shrugs and says, well, up to you. Either way. Uh, I mean, if it comes down to that, your help would be greatly appreciated, but I seldom, oh, very, very much doubt he will be that much of a challenge. And Zane, or uh, God damn it. <laughs> I just can't not say Zane. I just, just can't really, not say it. It's like you, I got. You just really like one direction. Okay, fair uh, enough. No, I was thinking of Billy actually, but there you go. Um, it's probably the age difference. I don't think I've ever actually heard a One Direction song. I haven't either. I just know that my fucking oh, sister's kids go crazy about it and I had to drive them to a concert. So you know how much I know about One Direction? Uh, probably about as what I said. They you know exist. which direction? <laughs> yeah, I know. that's about as much as I wanted to know about them. Not much of a fan of their singing. Now, if you want to talk to me about Descendants, the Disney franchise, boy, could I tell you a lot about that. But that's my kids. <laughs> um, anyway. Still, she uh, grew up. Back to the game. Um, mm -hmm. So, Lascalar just kind of shrugs and says, well, uh, you'd probably best get back downstairs to uh, to uh, mm -hmm. accept the challenge that you were to, to make good on your challenge. Uh, yeah. and he, he gestures at you guys to to get up from the table. Yeah, Should, you know, sorry, I'm just looking something up. Uh, uh, Oh, yeah, she is pretty much like 60 pounds. There you go. <laughs> like it's I said, 80 pounds, 80 pounds soaking wet. Um, oh, yeah, she's like a five foot elf. So, Yeah. The question is, she defended as a woman that he overestimated her weight. Hmm. I mean, yeah, that, that's kind of a... Well, you're going to die too then. Looks like we're burning this whole structure to the ground. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if gender relations in the Forgotten Realms are the same as they are in. Uh... I mean, I'd imagine that it'd be like they did try to patch some of it, I guess, kind of, yeah. in some of the games. But I don't know about the tabletop. So, well, hey, I'm gonna say this is a good spot to call it because I don't want to start something that's gonna take an hour or two to finish. Um, uh -huh. I know, but like. Right before the big, you're worse than Marvel. <laughs> hey, got to keep you guys coming back. Come back around, please. Okay. Um, so yeah, you guys head downstairs uh, to await uh, to see what happens. Does does Zane come, or what else happens? And will you get your revenge, Sarah? And we'll stop I mean, it there. Find out next time on Pirate Barbecue. Find out next time on Tomb of Annihilation with Grimish, Sarah, and Americana. Possibly severe. Uh, but thank you, guys. Uh, you can hit the button.